Greetings pet lovers, Bridget here with First Street Pets, and today we're going to talk about buying a puppy online. This is a new one for me because all my life I have gotten all my animals from rescues. They've been from shelters, rescue groups, or strays that I found in the street, and this is the first time in my life that I ever made the decision to buy a puppy. And I want to talk about that with you because you may be making that decision for your family, but there are some important perils to be aware of and to avoid to have the best experience. So as I mentioned, all my life I've had rescues and I came to the decision that at this time in my life, my other dogs have passed away and I want to buy a puppy because I am part of a bigger family now. There are young children involved and because of my abilities, I've often ended up with dogs that were difficult, that bite, that aren't social, that aren't good with kids. So I kind of wanted to start with a puppy of the correct breed to raise and be a good family pet. Not that a shelter dog can't, but I just kind of wanted to hedge my bet by starting with a puppy. So this is why I made my decision and I decided to get a Bernie Doodle for reasons of my own. You may decide on what type of a dog you want and possibly to get a puppy if not from a rescue or a shelter. So here are some of the things that I discovered when I started this for the first time in my life looking where to buy a puppy. So to begin with, I joined some Facebook groups for the breed that I was interested in. And this can be super helpful because if you've never had that type of dog before, you may not know some of the important things about that dog. For example, I decided to get a doodle. And one of the things is that they require grooming every six weeks, as do many different kinds of breeds, poodles, doodles, shih tzus, and the list goes on and you need to budget for that. So for a dog like a Big Doodle, depending on where you live, you can expect to spend $100 to $200 every six to eight weeks for grooming. And unless you're a groomer like I am, which was part of the reason why I made that decision, you need to budget for that and be realistic about that. Other dogs have different kinds of needs. Some dogs have super high drive, like a Malinois, very popular right now or a Border Collie, they're very beautiful, but if you're not very active and committed to the dog's training and exercise, neither one of you are gonna have a good experience. So joining these kinds of groups can be helpful because you can talk to other owners, learn about the health, the grooming, the exercise needs of these dogs to determine which breed is really the best one for your family. So one of the things that I'm aware of that you probably are because of the news and whatnot, if you're not necessarily involved in the humane community, is puppy mills. And this is something that some of these places look like they're straight out of a horror movie. And these are not places you want to patronize. So I guess the first thing is how do you determine the difference between a reputable breeder or a breeder you want to do business with and a puppy mill. So here's a few clues. So some breeders may have a lot of dogs. They may have like 20 dogs and they're producing a bunch of litters each year. So that doesn't necessarily mean they are a puppy mill, although volume is one of the factors. In a puppy mill, the animals are simply a commodity. You'll see they're often kept in cages, in barns, they're dirty, they're not socialized, they're not groomed, and the females are just kept pregnant all the time to produce maximum puppies. I have known people who got dogs from places like that, not realizing it, of course, with terrible consequences. Um, the dogs can be sick, they can have genetic behavior and medical problems, and plus, you are contributing to something that is not humane. So if you want to buy a puppy, you want to buy it from someone who is taking good care of their animals and they are part of the family and et cetera. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my search online and how that kind of gave me some clues as to who is and isn't a puppy mill. So the first thing I noticed, of course, I went online and looked up Barney Doodle puppies. <laughs> Tons of websites came up. Now, these are what I now know are called puppy brokers. And these companies run huge websites. They don't actually have puppies themselves, but they're like a network that connects various people. So it's a total crapshoot. You could 
have a great experience and get just the puppy you want or it could be a nightmare. So I don't recommend using those catch-all sites because you just don't know. In the worst case scenario, you could be totally scammed. And I have heard of this happening where people see a picture of a puppy they want and they send money and there never was any puppy. It was just a total scam. They're just pictures. I mean, think about it. You could take pictures on the internet of puppies or anything else and take money and tell people you're going to ship them these puppies or other items and you're not you're just taking people's money so there's no way to know if it's real when you're just strictly dealing with pictures on the internet the other factor is they could be from a puppy mill and you don't have any real way of knowing that so these are some of the clues that i got when i was looking at other websites so here's some red flags for you to watch out for now, when I looked at, well, because I didn't really consider those sites when I started looking up, like, is this a scam? Or I did a search for, like, such and such website scam, such and such website, is it valid? Or something like that. And I come up with comments on message boards and other articles about these kinds of sites. And so in addition to the scam that I mentioned where there are no puppies, other people mentioned maybe getting a puppy but it wasn't the same one in the picture that the puppy looked different. I know one person who got a puppy that was a lot younger than it was supposed to be, it was supposed to be eight or 10 weeks and it ended up being five weeks and was extremely sick. I know someone else who got a puppy from someone that immediately got parvo and almost died. Now parvo is easily preventable with vaccination and sanitary conditions. So that tells me this puppy wasn't vaccinated, which is ridiculous because the vaccines cost like $10 and <clears throat> that the puppies were not living in sanitary conditions. So these are all things that you don't know when you're just looking at pictures on the internet. So another red flag was going on websites where all the pictures were perfect. So for Bernie Doodles, they were all tricolored with lots of white, which is the most desirable because let's face it, they're a mixed breed. So sometimes they come out all black all brown or without any white markings, different kinds of hair. So only like the most desirable ones were pictured. They were all eight weeks old, every single one of them. And if you think about it, how, how are all those puppies the same age at the same time? That's, that's just not real. When I started finding websites of breeders that looked more legit, they would say things like um, litter available in August. Or there would be a few pictures of the ones that were available or pictures of younger puppies and said, these puppies will be available in three weeks or something like that. Some even said, we don't have any more puppies this year. Check back with us in January or whatever. And that seems more real. <laughs> like you're breeding a couple of litters, whatever you can reasonably care for and sell within a certain time period. That seems to me to be more real than hundreds of pictures of puppies that are all exactly the age that you want them to be. So when I finally decided on the breed that I wanted, I wanted to find a breeder where I could actually go there. So I found one in the Sacramento area because that's a couple hours drive for me, but that's close enough that I could actually go there, meet the puppies, meet the breeder and get some more information. I did not want a dog shipped to me. So this is something that I would also recommend to you. I know it may not always be possible depending on where you live, but even if it's a few hours drive, I would highly recommend that you do that just to avoid disappointment. And you wanna make sure when you talk to the breeder, you're getting information. I got shot records, I got a contract. They required that I spay the dog and they require that if I can't keep the dog, I bring it back. And they said, do not take the dog to a shelter or anything like that. They want to take responsibility. So these are all signs of a responsible breeder and someone that you actually want to do business with. Now, even though I'm talking about buying a puppy, there are a lot of puppies available in shelters and rescues. So don't eliminate that from your search. If you're not set on a certain breed if you're looking for a type like you want a small short-haired house dog or you want a bigger dog because you like to hike something like a shepherd or lab believe me there's plenty of puppies in shelters and rescues 
if you're willing to look and to travel and to maybe accept a dog that's a, a mixed breed but similar to what you are looking for. When I worked in shelters, we got puppies, we got pregnant moms, and so you can definitely find what you're looking for in some cases, at least, without having to buy from a breeder. So even if you don't want an adult dog, you don't want to risk health or behavior issues, that is also a possibility. So definitely check into your local shelters. You can go on a website like Pet Finder and type in whatever you want, Bernie Doodle, Border Collie, German Shepherd, and you will see some local listings. And from there, you can make phone calls. I know one of our local rescues has been taking dogs from puppy mills, and some of them are pregnant moms or puppies of desirable breeds. So that way you know you're doing a transaction that's ethical, but you're still getting the kind of dog that you want and at the age that you want. So there are a lot of options. Now, since you've done all this research and picked your breed, I shouldn't have to say this, but I'm going to add, make a commitment. You are bringing this dog into your home to raise as a family pet. And this shouldn't be like, let's see how this goes. You're making a commitment. If the puppy is for a child or to be a family pet, that's great. But you recognize that you're the one who's going to be providing the care. So don't give up on a puppy if you have the problems that you inevitably will with a puppy. I mean, tearing stuff up, house soiling, hyperactivity. You may not have had a puppy for a long time, so you may have forgotten about these things. But make a commitment to the training, to the grooming, to proper feeding, to the care. So you can ultimately raise a dog that will have a long and happy life and that will be a great family pet. Thank you for watching.